Hey, it's Straw Hat Sam here. I'm going to show you how to search for capacitors for your FPV drone. The first step is going to a website like DigiKey or Mouser and type in capacitors. And the type of capacitor that we want is the aluminum electrolytic. Okay. Now for this project, I want to find a main capacitor to use on the battery terminals of the Pigeon. And it's a 7 inch drone running 6S. So the voltage rating, we the battery is going to be 25 volts max. So our voltage rating, I want 50 volts. I recommend 50 volts, not 35, because we're working with bigger motors, 2808, and the braking caused by the motors when doing snap rolls and things like that can cause uh, voltage spikes up to double of your battery voltage. Then capacitance, this is really limited by the space in your frame that you can possibly allocate for your capacitor. So mm, a thousand microfarads is, has usually been a good bet for the kind of space that I'm working with. And obviously you can use a smaller capacitor for like a five inch, and then you'll need bigger ones for a bigger rig, like an X8 Cinelifter or something. Okay, and then we want something that's in stock normally stock in apply all okay our search result has a bunch of good stuff this is good but what's missing is a bunch of data on esr because everyone says you want a low esr capacitor well that's annoying because all that data is missing but if you go into one in one of these and then go into the data sheet we can draw some conclusions here let's learn some stuff so just looking at the top few rows here, the 35 volts one, the ESR, as the ESR decreases, the capacitance increases. As the ESR decreases, the ripple current increases. So we know that low ESR is good. That means higher ripple current is good because this really means ripple current capacity. How much ripple current can the capacitor deal with without it overheating and damaging itself and reducing its lifetime. So if we are missing information on ESR, we can glean information from the ripple current rating. Okay, going back to our search results, let's take a look. So we have ripple current here. There's a lot more data on ripple current than there is on ESR. That's great. We want the high frequency one because that's closer to the range of frequencies that our ESCs are producing. 120 hertz, that's slow. Okay, so let's sort this in descending order. 3.5 amps, okay. And if we do it the other way, we can see we're on the scale of milliamps. And notice when I have a low ripple current capacity, these are these lifetimes over here, they're kind of short. And if I switch that around, these lifetimes are kind of high. So that's another indicator. And then also there's impedance as well. Like if I sort impedance, we have very low impedance here. And we got 10,000 hours. This one looks pretty cool. What's this one? Oh, look at that. That may be an ideal candidate. So let's look at the dimensions though, because I want a pretty skinny one. Yeah, see, this is 16 millimeters. It's it's just too fat. I can't I can't fit it into my frame. So I think I need to apply more filters. Um, let's restrict ourselves to 12.5 millimeters diameter. So that takes us down to 20 capacitors. Okay. So um, let's start sorting some stuff. We've got an impedance of 20 and 21 up here ripple current of 3.5. Wow, this one's kind of a lot better than the rest. What about if it's lifetime? 10,000 hours? Okay, this one's looking great. Let's check it out. Nikki Khan, that's a good brand. Also this one, United Chemicon, that's a good brand as well. Both of these are pretty similar. They're the same exact shape. What about the length though? Is there any difference in length? The height, which is the length, this one's 33, this one's 36. This one has a lower impedance. It also has a higher ripple current rating. It's general purpose, which is okay, it's fine. 
Automotive is the best, I think, but if you can't get it, general purpose is going to be okay. So let's go for this one. And we can see that there's almost 7,000 in stock, so that won't be a problem in terms of getting a hold of them. And the price is pretty reasonable, $2 a piece. So it looks like we found our main battery capacitor for the Pigeon.